when it comes to teaching in the digital age, often if you ask a teacher, well, what do you think teaching with technology is all about? I'll say things, well, I suppose it could be uh, making use of PowerPoint in, in a classroom. Or maybe they aren't a little bit more fancy. Maybe it's uh, they're thinking about teaching online. It's using something like Zoom to, to deliver your class. And they're right, absolutely. But there's something fundamentally important when it comes to understanding how we teach online. And we need to understand that not only are there two aspects to it in terms of teaching and learning, there's also how we do it, whether it's passive and often ineffective or active and highly engaging. And we need to understand these four ways in which we can teach online. And so very quickly, I want to run you through what's called the Digital Age Teaching Approaches, or the data model. And it's just a model to help you understand that when it comes to teaching, there are different ways in which we can do it. And depending on which way we do it, we're going to have more or less success. And it's going to make us either absolutely exhausted or fulfilled and enthused. All right. So very quickly, let's have a look at the data model. So the first option is who is running the teaching? Who is it leading it? Is it the teacher? And that's often been the approach uh, that is traditionally adopted because it is the old sage on the stage. It's something that's come through all the, the many, many generations where, where the person that stands in front, the lecturer, the teacher, the instructor, all the focus is on them. So is it the teacher who is directing the learning? Or is it possibly the student who is directing the own learning? It's, it's student discovery. And that doesn't mean the teacher is not involved, but it's a change in focus. And so the one axis to consider is teacher directed or student directed. The other axis to consider is, is the learning relatively passive, whereby the student who is involved is passively consuming content? Or has the learning invoked some pedagogies that are activating the teaching and or learning, that, that's making it engaging, that, that's bringing the layers of learning up to higher levels of cognitive investment. So very quickly, let's have a look at the data model. So the one and the first option is teacher-directed, passive style teaching. Now, this is traditional teaching. This could be anything from using that PowerPoint presentation in your classroom, or it could be having a Zoom lecture or a Zoom lesson. Now, we've seen a lot of this, especially during the, the COVID-19 crisis, when all of a sudden so many people are having to jump on, online and teach. And teachers are essentially copying what they've always done and then starting to deliver lessons online using technologies like Zoom. Now, this can be very exhausting and ineffective because it's one thing to sit and listen to a live human being speak to you, but it's another thing to sit and watch them on a tiny little screen, often on a mobile device. So what do we do? Well, we need to change that traditional style of teaching, that teacher-directed, to teacher-directed active. And the way we do that is we can apply the ACT pedagogies. There are a range of pedagogies that we can apply to this. It's going to make it really, really powerful. For example, we could take Zoom and add another tool to it, tools such as Mentimeter, and all of a sudden, we can actually engage through conversation and correction. And so we've changed using the same approach which has a lot of validity, teacher-directed, but we've added the active component. And the same thing could apply in a classroom, where the teacher may be, for example, traditionally using something like PowerPoint. They could be switching that, again, using Mentimeter or using a Kahoot, and all of a sudden they're engaging their class. They are making the technology not just simply as a delivery tool, but as a means of engaging. And what's key there is understanding the pedagogies that enable us to take those technologies and make them engaging. So that's the first way. But that is still, for both of those, whether passive or active, are teacher-directed. The other approach is student-directed. And this is increasingly becoming more and more popular because as teachers, as we understand, there has been a paradigm change where no longer do we necessarily have to be the ones who are delivering all the content because there is so much great content out there we're increasingly moving towards student discovery, student-directed learning. Now, this doesn't mean that the, the, the lecturer or the student is not providing the content, but this content is typically placed on some sort of learning management system. Maybe it's Moodle, maybe it is Google Classroom, Edmodo, or other online learning space, and the content is placed there for the students to work through. But just like teacher-directed passive is highly ineffective, so is student-directed 
online learning when it's passive highly ineffective. Again, taking a recording of a video and putting it on a space and just expect them to learn simply by watching that is not very effective. Or taking lots of notes and dumping them in their same form online is highly ineffective. It's not encouraging our students to get engaged in the learning process. They are merely consumers, even though they are the ones working in a self-paced way through the content that they've been given. Rather, we can have student directed that is active. We can take those same learning management systems like Moodle and we can add layers to it that all of a sudden activate it, that have built-in quizzes, that have questions inside videos, that have conversation spaces, that have databases where content can be curated. And all of those that I've just mentioned are act pedagogies. And when we take those and place them into a learning management system, all of a sudden it transforms how student-directed learning takes place. So the big takeaways I want you to understand that there are two ways in which learning should happen in the digital age. Partly, it should be teacher-directed, but this increasingly should not be our primary mean because there is the power of having student discovery learning. But either, whether it is teacher-directed or student-directed, the key is activating both of those in order for them to be effective.